Hey y'all, it's Sarah from Van Girl Designs. Electrical wiring is what I've gotten the most questions about so far, so I thought I'd give a short explanation on how you can approach sizing your electrical wires. The short story is to make a list of all the loads in your van, like your refrigerator, your lights, your water pump, and check the amperage for each of those loads. You want to make sure that your wire is sized big enough to carry that amperage without melting, of course. And then you also want to make sure that your wire is sized big enough to minimize the voltage drop across the wire. As electricity flows through a wire, it experiences resistance, which can reduce the voltage experienced between the battery and the equipment. So priority one is to size your wire so it doesn't melt. And then priority two is to slightly upsize um, or increase the diameter of the wire so that it doesn't experience too much voltage drop as it passes through the wire. You want to make sure that, especially when your batteries are um, getting to a lower voltage, you're getting as much voltage as you can from your batteries to your electrical loads um, so that your electrical loads will power, will remain powered for as long as possible. So first, it's important to understand the theory behind electricity. Um, this is just a short little explanation. So we have watts, amps, and volts. Amps times volts equals watts. And then watts divided by amps is volts, or watts divided by volts is amps. Amps is a measure of the current flowing through the wire. Voltage is a measure of the difference in potential um, that causes the current to flow. And then watts is a measure of the power at the end of the wire. Uh, to think about this more simply, we can think about it in terms of water flowing through a pipe. So amps is kind of like the flow of the water through the pipe. Voltage is kind of like the pressure behind the water um, coming from the pump that's actually causing the water to flow. So you can't have water flow without either a difference in gravity, which kind of like difference in potential, or pressure behind the, 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 um, the water to make it flow. And then watts you can think of as the power of the water coming out of the pipe. So anybody who's like sprayed a fire hose knows that like with a lot of pressure and a lot of flow, water can actually do a lot of work. So you can think about that like watts. I used to be a water engineer, so I really like the water analogy. Let's keep thinking about it this way when we're thinking about how to size electrical wire. As water flows through a pipe that's way too undersized, it experiences additional friction. That friction causes pressure losses as the water flows through the pipe. The pressure losses in turn reduce the force or the power of the water at the end of the pipe. If we think about this in terms of electricity, we can think about current running through an electrical wire. As the current goes through the wire, it experiences resistance. Resist the more resistance, the more voltage loss. The more voltage loss, the more overall power loss you experience. So if a wire is way too undersized, the current's gonna experience a lot of resistance, which means a lot of voltage loss, which means a lot less power you're gonna get between your batteries and your loads. Um, so again, you wanna make sure your wire is a little bit oversized so that you don't experience that voltage and in turn power loss um, between the batteries and your load. And then the most important thing to remember is that resistance means heat. As current experiences resistance, heat is generated. So the smaller the wire, the greater the, the resistance and the more the heat, which means melting potential. So again, you wanna make sure that you're sizing your wire big enough to avoid melting and to avoid voltage loss. There's a few more things I wanna show you in terms of calculating the exact wire gauge you need and planning where the wire is gonna go in your van using a wiring diagram that you can create yourself. So to do that, let's go check out the computer screen. Here's a very simple diagram showing DC and AC loads. Obviously, it's missing a lot of the components that make an electrical system complete, so don't use it as a reference for anything other than this conversation about wiring. As an example, I want to use a wire gauge calculator to figure out what gauge I need to run 20 feet of wire between the batteries and my refrigerator. It's a 12 volt DC line and the fridge amperage is 6.2 amps, according to the manufacturer. There are some great tools online to help you calculate your minimum wire gauge. I'm using a calculator from the wire barn, and I input all my parameters, press calculate, and look at what gauge wires are appropriate. A 12 gauge wire is big enough to minimize voltage drop to 2%, which I'm happy with. So to reduce cost, I'm gonna go with the 12 gauge rather than upsizing to something bigger. Now make a list of all the electrical loads in your van, along with their max amperage and the approximate length of wire between the distribution panel and each load. Then repeat this calculation process for all of the loads in your van, making sure to change the voltage to 120 for AC loads. For example, I'm using a 10 gauge wire in some places, so I might opt to use it everywhere in my van. Running bigger wire will never hurt anything, except maybe your wallet. One last tip is to draw out a wiring diagram to make things easier on yourself when you're pulling wire. 
This will also help you approximate wire lengths for calculating minimum wire gauge and purchasing enough wire for your project. Check out our diagram and let me know in the comments if you have any questions or anything to add. Um, 